Hey there, Dirt Riders on the Tube. Thanks for tuning in to the Enduro Bandit channel. Today I'm doing a 10 year in review of my Geo X31 250cc four stroke. It's made by uh, X Motos. Um, they also go by the XZT250 and XB31 by X Motos. So they go under a few names now. <clears throat> but, I mean, Geo is the most well known one because. You know, a lot of people have seen Geos around. They've been around for a while, but um, the actual brand Geo, uh, I think they only make like electric mopeds now or something. But anyway, I got this one uh, back in 2013. It's a 2011. I got it for $1,200 on the auction on their site. Uh, pretty good deal. Built it in the crate when it arrived. And that's $1,200 including shipping and tax and everything. So that's pretty decent. Um, all things considered for a Chinese bike, I'm really happy with it. Um, I'm gonna go over the whole bike. It's been ridden really hard. Um, and I know what that means. Like I have a YZ250X, I ride the bikes pretty hard, especially this thing, I just beat it. So um, I wouldn't recommend buying a Chinese bike actually, unless if you have a really tight budget and it's all you can really afford. Um, because um, a name brand bike for the same price would probably be very unreliable, but I'm not saying that a Chinese bike would be reliable either. It might be depending you know, how hard it's been used, but generally you can pick them up for fairly cheap, but I'll leave that decision to you, but I'd recommend upgrading as quick as you can afford it because of the suspension mainly. Um, so I'll start at the top. The handlebars are actually really good on these. These are the originals. They've taken some really hard hits. A lot of nasty accidents with this bike. Probably probably uh, some of the hardest accidents I've ever had, including um, one of the ones where I broke my wrist once going over the handlebars on this bike. You know, these aren't the original plastics either because some of them have broke clean off. <clears throat> but the handlebars, uh, they've only bent very slightly here on my most recent accident last fall, which was on a hard packed dirt road. I was in fourth gear cruising around the corner. It was had just rained and the bike just slipped out from under me in a split second. But I mean, it's barely noticeable. It looks straight still. So one of the first things you're gonna wanna do when you get one of these, if it hasn't been done already, is swap out the grips because the stock grips are garbage and you're Wrists are going to cramp up really quick and get really sore from that. I recommend Pro Taper Pillow Top Grips. I use those on all my bikes and they they really help with hand and wrist for fatigue. Um, also the MSR Bush Guards, a must, ha must have if you're a trailer rider. Um, these ones have reusable inserts. Um, most all their brands seem to be going with the non-reusable inserts, which means that every time you need to change the grips, or if it takes a really hard hit or something, then you're gonna need to buy another pair of inserts here, which is about $15. Um, so these are the original levers, I believe. Um, this one, this side took a hit hard uh, a long, long time ago. Uh, the, the throttle, it needed to be fixed from that, but overall works great. Um, just needed a bolt put through it, but this little tip broke off in the accident, but the brakes work decent. Uh, when you first get these bikes, um, the front brake is too touchy. Like you have very little suspension travel and it's stiff suspension. Combine that with a very touchy front brake and you're gonna go over the handlebars if you aren't careful, which is what happened when I found out that my rear brake was broken off when it was too late and I was going down a hill. And I tried to squeeze the front brake and went over the handlebars. I should have locked the rear wheel, but kind of like in the moment, quick thinking, or I would it would have been a runaway train. It was already a runaway train basically, but we're at the clutch here. So I'm on my second cable, I believe, maybe the third, because I was doing the adjustment only up here and it kept fraying because I didn't have enough, you know, of an adjustment room there. So you gotta make sure to use both ends of the cable to do the adjustment so that you're you know you want a tiny bit of free play here but then you want it to fully engage so and you also don't want 
it hanging on barely here, which is that was the problem I was having and it was causing it to fray. All right, next up, electric start. Absolute garbage. Uh, don't even pursue getting another battery once your first one's out because I've been through three batteries and they only last, you know, like about three outings before it kills the battery, like for good. Um, and I tried to maintain the battery and everything, you know, there was even a battery fire going to the alternator that I, there was evidence of under the seat. And after that, I was like, there's no way I'm putting another battery in this thing. So, um, the electric start setup, I mean, it works, but it's, uh, pretty crappy. So, um, just kills batteries, basically a waste of money. I do like the uh, on off switch here with the key. You can remove that key if you have to leave the bike for a while in the bush. Nobody's going to want to walk this thing out of the bush, really. Um, unless if they have a thing for Chinese bikes. But so I know you don't want to paint plastics, but I mean, it was kind of like the final send off for this bike, and I really like the black and orange look. Plus, I have spare plastics um, of the number plates that they can... Whoever wants to buy this thing this year, I'm going to be putting out for sale, and they can, you know, choose what number plates they want, white or black. And, yeah, I the front fender snapped off, so this is not This is actually the one that came on the bike, and then I'd switch to a newer one, and then that one broke off because some guy, um, his rear wheel slid into my fender on a hill climb and snapped it right off. This one broke off in the accident that I broke my wrist on. Um, and the rear fender and seat are original. You can't buy these. You can't buy plastics kits for these bikes. It's a good thing that I bought a full plastics kit a long time ago. But it didn't come with the seat or the rear fender, which sucks. And um, what happened here is these two little pieces here used to run back here. Kind of like a frame for the rear fender. And after a couple hard hits, you know, bike rolling backwards, then that broke off and the fender was really floppy. And so I put this in, you know, with a screw and that keeps it firm. But the seat's barely holding together now. Um, actually, I'm pretty impressed after 10 years. Gas tank doesn't hold that much gas, but it is, this bike is very good on gas, so it'll still go I'd say about two and a half hours, depending on how hard you ride. I usually, if I'm going on a longer trip, I will put a pouch in the front with a one liter can of gas in it. Um, or else I'd be, you know, running out of gas. But I've had some close calls, you know, running out of gas just as I got back, stuff like that. It doesn't have reserve tanks, tank, so that kind of sucks. Um, one thing I like about these the older Geos, I'm not sure about the newer ones, the XB31s, but anyway, on the X31s, most of them came with a McCuny carburetor. So it's kind of like a performance carb as far as this engine goes. And, you know, it's name brand. It it works good. Like, you never have to mess with it, really. Mine could use a tune, but uh, no complaints there. Um, so we better stick to the front so I don't miss anything. Um, the riser bars on these bikes should be honestly at least twice as high because you're, for a guy with a taller back like me, you're pretty hunched over standing up on this bike. And the other issue when you stand up is that the chain becomes loose for some reason and you can hear it, you know, rattling. Uh, the tension is kind of off a bit, but it, when you're sitting down, then it's really tight. So. It's you, you have to find the balance, you know, where it's um, not too loose, not too tight, but you're at a compromise with these bikes for some reason. Because um, you don't want to pop the chain, you know, doing jumps and stuff. And I'm not super heavy, but if you're a heavy guy doing jumps, you're likely to pop the ch this chain. Wouldn't recommend this bike for anyone who weighs, you know, over 150 pounds, really. It's more of a pit bike with a 250 engine. The engine has, if I remember correctly, 18 horsepower, but it's really torquey. It's it's uh, got tight gears. It's like a tractor It's pretty good for the the gnarly uphill stuff as long as there isn't like big rocks on it and stuff because uh, these small wheels 
uh, puts you at a disadvantage when it comes to really rough terrain and the suspension as well. Um, but other than that, actually, this thing is a goat. So it's done some pretty tough stuff that my YZ struggled with. Um, I mean, it's it struggled too, but it's just impressive that it can do it when it's so much smaller than the YZ. It's just the gearing is really tight, which really helps. It's got that bottom end right from the bottom, uh, very linear power. Uh, all right, we're back to the front. Um, the front wheel, this isn't the original wheel, the, the original rim had been warped and dinged really bad everywhere from, you know, taking hits and, you know, hard riding after years does that. And that is with tightening the spokes as well. Um, but it still eventually wore out. It's probably not as good quality as a name brand rim, but nonetheless, it was beat to crap. So this isn't the original one. And this is from a brand called LIGO that you you can order pit bike parts from eBay through them and that's where I got a lot of replacement parts for this bike because you can't actually find very many parts through Geo or X Motos for these sadly but they have a lot of universal stuff that you can you can make it fit so I just had to get a couple of spacers machined for the front axle so that um, the disc brake would fit and it feels great like it's a little bit offset if you look it's a little bit to the left here um, but it doesn't affect riding at all and works great and uh, only on my second rubber I did use the other one until it was just you know the sides were just tearing off and everything all the nubs were just tearing off um, but yeah, this one is near the end of its life too. They're starting to crack. But um, the original tires are really grippy on these bikes. So they actually have good performance for grip. Um, they wear a little fast, but, you know, can't complain. Um, so the front caliper, I haven't changed it. It's still kicking. I've only flushed it once, if I remember. I've only ever flushed it one time. And... Like I said, when you first get the bike, it's a very touchy front brake, uh, but you actually, you want it to um, wear down so that it's a little more forgiving, uh, less chance of uh, the hair trigger going off and you going over the handlebars. So yeah, front forks, people say that uh, the front forks on these will blow if you take big jumps, but you know, I'd have to disagree because I have taken a lot of hard, big jumps where the bike's bottoming, bottoming out hard, you know, to the point where it cracked the frame on both sides. And the forks probably have a lot of pressure built up inside, but they have never leaked. They've never blown. I've never maintained them. Like, um, there's, there isn't even like, you know, a hole, like a little screw to bleed them or anything to bleed the air out. But, you know, they just keep going. So, I mean, it is what it is. And I'm happy that they're at least, you know, standing up to the abuse. Um, we'll stay on suspension for now. Rear shock made by Showa. Um, it's more of a pit bike shock and it needs to be a maximum stiffness or it's pretty much garbage. Um, but it does take abuse. It's never leaked. I've never maintained it in 10 years and, you know, it'll take a hit, but it like I said, the suspension is very stiff on this bike and I wouldn't recommend taking big jumps with it um, or you're gonna end up cracking your frame like I did and then had to get the cracks welded before they started spreading. Um, this part here cracked, um, this little sprocket guard um, because the chain came off once and uh, you know just all clogged up in here and cracked that from the jam. Um, but it still holds on with one bolt. And these engines are a clone of the Honda CRF 230, air-cooled, and you can maintain them basically the same. So I've done two valve adjustments in 10 years, which is very, very minimal. I wouldn't recommend waiting that long because you're going to uh, wear out your engine a lot faster, but um, actually quite a reliable engine. I mean, there's probably lemons out there, but it's quite a reliable engine, and I would wait like the first time I waited until I couldn't even start the bike, like 
the compression was so low I couldn't start it before I did the valve tune and you never want to do that but I have a video on how to do the valve tune um, you can find that and I'll put the link in the description and it's not very hard on these bikes although it is a little tedious um, so you're gonna want to do that to keep your compression at a good level um, so let's talk about the transmission it's five speed um, after a lot of you know rattling around wear and tear and stuff it doesn't want to go into neutral really hard time finding neutral oftentimes it doesn't want to downshift to first or sometimes it doesn't even want to downshift to second you know it, it doesn't want to go down it it wants to go up but it doesn't want to go down often it still works i should say um so yeah it's this engine um as long as you put new oil in it as soon as you get it before even riding it because the oil they come with um, it is not for running the engine it's just for shipping and a lot of people are too dumb to do that they're too impatient and that is why they fry these engines so quick um, so yeah I have abused the crap out of this engine but I also do regular oil changes you know if my oil starts turning dark brown I'm changing it or I count the hours or whatever, you know, just uh, generally. I don't actually have an hour meter on it, but I make sure to keep up good maintenance on this bike. I um, make sure all the bolts are tight after every ride. That's one thing that you have to do on these Chinese bikes or they are literally gonna fall apart. Like for instance, um, when I first got the bike, uh, I wasn't really doing that and, you know, I do it every three rides or whatever, like, oh yeah, like thinking that it's like a name brand bike or whatever, which I still would recommend doing it on even name brand bikes, but my rear axle fell out at 80 kilometers an hour, you know, the wheels fell down and I was drifting this thing and nearly smoked a bunch of trees, like it was close, I would've been in the hospital. So I was stuck and uh, no way of repairing it because the parts were all mangled and bent, but you know, got it back together, and um, also worth mentioning, as far as abusing the engine goes, um, this um, intake manifold had a hairline crack around it that you couldn't see unless if, you know, you took the gas tank off and everything looked at it with a flashlight, and it very slowly was spreading, and it was like that from when I got the bike. It was barely, like it must have been very tiny when I bought the bike, but the hairline crack continued to spread around the rim of the intake manifold and causing the bike to, you know, run hot. I uh, wanted a lot of gas. So eventually I had that uh, air fuel mixture screw backed out so far that it just fell out while I was riding and it wanted even more fuel than that to the point where it wouldn't really even run. So um, I put a new carb in, got a replacement carb thought that would fix it because I'd done all the carb messing around with the stock carb that I could <clears throat> and that didn't fix it so I started looking more carefully you know I didn't think that it could crack because it's like you know pretty decently thick piece of metal but that turned out to be the issue so I'd probably ran the bike for about 20 hours um, maybe even more um, with that hairline crack you know sucking in probably dirt and debris and stuff in there very thin crack so not no big chunks but um, enough that it would be harder on the engine um, i'm probably only on like the third spark plug this thing doesn't fall spark plugs um, also another thing that i did that i shouldn't have is i neglected the um, air filter uh, which you're supposed to oil those you know whenever they get dirty and I had just you know been cleaning it every three rides or whatever uh, you know washing it out and putting it back in dry but I didn't know at the time because I was fairly new to dirt biking that you're supposed to oil these things so I'd probably put about I'd probably put about uh, 30 hours on this bike before I started maybe 40 even before I started oiling the air filter which is amazing that the engine didn't fry, but I mean, it is a clone of the Honda Sierra F230. People have compared the internals on these engines 
if you get one of the good ones like I must have, then apparently the quality is just as good. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm quite happy with the engine. It's taken a lot of abuse. Pretty low compression right now, though. It's struggling, um, you know, low power, uh, struggling up the hills and, and uh, any gear above second. But... I uh, still can get it into fifth on, fifth on the flat and, you know, get it wide open. But, you know, I have had this thing wide open over the past few years. I've really um, got this engine really hot a few times, you know, to the point of having the um, dipstick so hot I could barely unscrew it without burning my hand. And it's plastic. So um, that's pretty crazy because, you know, I had had the engine wide open in fifth on the four service roads for about 25 minutes straight and I, I've done that probably about three times and you know it starts getting so hot that uh, it starts uh, giving you signs like as if it's low on gas is what it feels like you know it starts like uh, cutting out a little bit I don't know what that is but probably something to do with it overheating also worth mentioning is that the air filter managed to last nine years which is amazing um, and it finally fell apart a year ago when I was cleaning it, the seams parted and it was no longer usable and I couldn't find any replacement air filter for these bikes. Uh, so instead I bought a metal cone filter and it's sticking a little ways into the air box you can see, but um, that's working out good. And it actually requires a lot less maintenance um, doesn't need to be cleaned really unless if I get a bunch of mud in there which is quite hard to do so when you get these bikes they they do have a nice um, guard for the engine down here that's a nice bonus um, the kickstart after all these years um, it has bent you can see that it's bent a little little bit which is kind of expected Let's see it's got some Got some compression still, but you know, nothing like it used to have where you could barely even kick it down um, when it was new, but um, she still goes. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, I've been relying on the kickstart and a problem I've been having probably related to, you know, carburetor. It probably needs a carburetor tune, but um, it will flood the bike pretty quick and then you got to turn the gas off you know run the you know kick it a few more times to get the gas out of the carb and then turn it back on and then it will start and it seems to do that fairly often if I stall it or something um, but you know it's an old it's this bike's been whipped so uh, you can see the rear rim you can see these dents in it and you know that gives you an idea because it's a pretty small rim, like it takes a lot to ding these, but yeah, so this isn't the original chain either, and not the original chain guide, those both had to be replaced long ago, well, well not long ago, but I did, I should have changed them long ago, because my original chain had kinks in it everywhere, uh, but this one's really good, I'm maintaining it, maintaining it better, um, <clears throat> still in the original sprocket, Although I had broken off all the bolts, had to replace them with bigger ones, you know, um, tap and die, that crap, and um, this side too, bolts broke. Uh, the rear caliper, this is a bit of a gripe I have, is this is the third caliper I'm on, because when you try to bleed this one for some reason, when you try to flush it, um, for some reason you can't get pressure back so you have to you end up buying another one you know from Bligo or eBay and so I'd recommend actually not flushing these on these uh, geos because um, you're just gonna end up with no rear caliper then which is worse than having a one that doesn't work very well so run it until it's completely cooked get a new caliper put it on don't even worry about flushing it like as you can see the fluid isn't clean I don't care. Um, it works. Foot pegs. These aren't the originals. I bent the originals uh, from you know crashes or whatever. They're bent up. So replaced those long, long time ago. Um, 
and you might want to upgrade. I don't know if you can get a pair that will fit in here. You probably can get a set of uh, nice aftermarket ones, but these aren't the best. You know, my boots slip off them fairly easily compared to, you know, name brand foot pegs. Um, all right, we'll move on to the muffler. Obviously, this isn't the original muffler, which fell apart into many pieces a long time ago. And I'd been trying to get it to hold together, you know, by running more and more bolts through it until the bolt holes were just stretched so far and there was so many bolts in it that it just couldn't hold together no matter what. No, no matter what. There wasn't enough room for mo more holes in it, basically, to hold it together. So I got this one off eBay. Uh, I think it was about 40 bucks or something when I got it. There are more now, but um, it has a removable baffle, but I keep the baffle in because you never know when someone's going to stick a rod in there to check. Um, so I had a guy actually who was inspecting our dirt bikes when I went riding at a park, you know, at a maintained park that you have to pay to go to, which was really nice, you know, single track trails and crap, but um, it passed the test, thank God. But yeah, I don't have it done professionally either because it was kind of hard to get it on there. And also I had to get this welded, this part welded to the muffler, which came off my old muffler. But yeah, you find a way, you adopt and improvise, because not every part's available for these. But you know, it's still kicking after 10 years. And that was my goal when I got it. You can get some pretty good Chinese made bikes nowadays, not gonna lie. They have much better suspension. And that's something that's really big if you, you know, plan to advance in dirt biking. It wears out your whole body. You know, when you're riding this bike hard on single track, it will wear you down. And that is the reason why I'm going to probably be selling the bike this summer. So, um, yeah, I might go on a, another ride, maybe two. Maybe invite my brother to take it with me. And, um, yeah, that'll be it. Somebody will get this, this little orange bandit. So, thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I uh, hope you found it helpful and keep on ripping it.